Okay. So I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is May Gobelau, and I do I do live broadcast every Wednesday morning at 6 30 a.m. Hawaii time. That's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time this week, but next week it'll be 12.30 because of Daylight Saving. So I'm really glad to have you guys on today. Uh, and today's topic is Nine Heartfelt Ways to Create Wealth. Thanks for joining live on Instagram, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, Periscope, really appreciate you all. So today is Nine Heartfelt Ways to Build Wealth. All right? So that's what our topic is. Hi, Jeff and Millionaire, welcome. So anyways, I uh, want to tell you a little bit about myself before I get started. And right now, I'm doing a bunch of lives at one time. I have Instagram Live on, I have Periscope on, and I have YouTube Live on. Thank you for being on each channel. Really appreciate it. Hi, SM. Welcome. Hi, Daniel. Welcome. Thanks for joining in. So... That's what I'm doing right now is I'm on three different lives. I'm going to add one more. And the reason I do that is because it's just easier time-wise, as you can imagine, to, to do all these lives at once. <laughs> so if I look between you and other screens, that's what's going on. Just so you know. um, and uh, let me just put one more live on and then I have one more place I do live. So these are places I do live. YouTube Live is Creative Abundance now is my channel. Instagram is Finance Freedom Mastermind. Facebook is also Finance Freedom Mastermind, the page. And then on Periscope, it's my name, May Google. Thank you, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. So let me just start the live on Facebook and then we shall continue on. <laughs> so the topic today is really good and um, I want to share with you what's going on with this because um I was actually inspired from reading a certain book and I want to tell you more about it. So let's get on here. This is taking a little while so it's going to so we'll just give it some time. So let me start by explaining who I am so you can understand who I am and where I come from and then we'll move on from there. Yeah. So my name is May Dulao. I live in Honolulu, Hawaii, with my four-year-old son Jordan and my husband Jamel. And I started this blog. Hi, Zena. I started um, doing financial freedom stuff uh, back in 2009, around there. Uh, at the time, I was in a bad relationship, wanted to get out, and I needed some money. I borrowed money um, to hire attorneys to help me get out of that relationship. Oh, you don't know English. You're going to have a hard time on my life. <laughs> anyway, thanks for being on anyway. But, um, so I was not very good with money back then. I bounced a lot of checks. Um, I remember being really stressed out at the time. Hi, Nimrod, you're welcome. Uh, about all the money issues that I was having. So what happened was I decided to, um, learn more about how to create wealth in my life. Okay, so how did I do that? Uh, basically, I read a lot of books, and I went to seminars, and I just figured out how is it that I can make money in my life, for real, you know? And at the time, I was doing a lot of stupid things with money, um, you know? And, and I want to talk about that today, because, you know, people say things like, you know, you should do this, should do that. But in real life, we, we're very irrational, yeah? I, I just want to say from my own personal experience, I'm irrational. <laughs> Maybe you're very rational. <laughs> but I've been reading this book, The Worldly Philosopher by Robert Hillbrother. And this book is about um, the history of economic thinking, right? I'm reading it because Robert Kiyosaki recommends you read this book if you want to be a business owner and investor who says read this. So that's why I'm reading this book, okay? Now, this book, at one point I was, taught, I was reading this chapter on the Victorian world. And there are these economists that started saying that, you know, we can model economics and, you know, how it works by assuming that everyone is always looking for their hot thinking curve. Assuming that everyone is always looking for their own self interest, looking out for their own self-interest. So there's an economic theory based on everyone is 
looking out for their own self-interest, right? Now, I read that, and I was like, first of all, that's not even true, all right? Because there are lots of times in my life when I have done things, and I don't know if you're the same as me, but this is what I've done. And I've done things that have not been in my self-interest at all, okay? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and um, they've been, like, against my self-interest, actually. Like, they, 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 like, hurt me instead of help me. So, you know, the whole thing about we always do things in our self-interest, I thought that was just silly. Because for sometimes I'll self-sabotage myself, right? I'll do something that's not even good for me, <laughs> you know? So... I, just because I'm emotional or just because I just didn't feel like it. So the whole thing about, you know, we do things that are self-interest doesn't even make sense. So then I got a little annoyed and it inspired me to do this, this topic today. And what this topic is about is when you are irrational, when you don't do things in your best interest, how do you create wealth, right? When you are an emotional being, when you are, you know, I've done things that have been very anti-wealth, okay? I have lent money to, I lent money to a boyfriend just to prove that he wouldn't do something kind of deal, you know, <laughs> high toxic cat, you know, it's like emotional lending. I've done things like that. Never got the money. I didn't lend it. I actually gave it because I knew he wouldn't pay me back. Stupid stuff like that where I just got rid of my money. It wasn't, it wasn't rational. It wasn't in my best interest, right? I, um, i Gone out and spent money because I was emotional. Hi, Chris Karen. One, uh, another example. My husband, you know, he had a, he was mad at me and let's smoke something. <laughs> he was mad at me or something the other day, and then he was like, "I'm going to," and he broke a bunch of stuff, right? Like, and was that in his best self interest? No. I mean, if it was in his financial best self interest, even the broken things, he would have, <laughs> he would have sold them, right? <laughs> So the whole economic theory that people go work toward their self-interest to me is total BS, right? It makes no sense at all. People are emotional, they're irrational. Now that doesn't mean they're always emotional and they're always irrational. I'm not going to say that, but to say that they do things in their economic self-interest is a total lie, all right? Now, like I said, sometimes it's on purpose. You're mad and you decide to do something stupid with your stuff or throw away your money or spend it too much or get drunk, who knows, you know, <laughs> people do ri ridiculous things with their money, okay, now, that, that is one thing, so I don't believe in that whole economic theory, and like, we do things in our self -interest. now, let's move that on to real life, okay, so what does that mean for us in this discussion today, hi, welcome, thanks for joining, hi, food, six, eight, two, welcome, thanks for being on, guys, by the way, tell me your name, where you're from, you know, I'm always interested in getting to know you guys better, Texas is back. <laughs> okay, so that comes down to this topic today, all right? So I went through a lot of crap. I was irrational, emotional. I did a lot of stuff that was not in my best self-interest, which made my wealth go really down. I'm not going to kid you. I had um, about, I think my worst was $30,000 in debt, personal debt, credit card debt, personal line credit debt. This is not house debt or anything nice like that, okay? <laughs> it's like personal debt. So what happened was I paid off all that debt. It took me about six years to pay off all the debt. I used to have debt payments like twelve hundred a month. Now I've got no debt payments. And um I also have passive income coming in monthly. How to influence negative people into positivity. That's the key, right? That's what we're gonna talk about today. This is exciting. Because I was one of those people. I was one of those people who was down and out doing stupid stuff with my money. Uh, spending it emotionally, um, using it to get out of relationships, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff I did. I was spending money to learn how to make money, you know, the get-rich-quick stuff. I'm doing that, too. <laughs> uh, I spent a lot of money on education. Holy cow. Yeah, I spent it, and I it was all, like, credit cards. And I would buy courses and not do them. Have you done that before? <laughs> or I'd buy materials and then not use them. and uh, kind of wasteful spending, right? So all the stuff that I did, I I did things to turn this around, all right? I paid off all my debt. I don't get into debt anymore, all right? I, I had the opportunity to spend 30 grand for a course the other day. It was that Dean Graziosi 
success habits, they go pitching this thirty thousand dollar course. The thing is, the thing is, I have the capacity to spend thirty thousand dollars just like that. I have so many lines of credit that are empty, right? And I could have just bought it, <laughs> but I didn't because I'm so, I'm so um, more in control of my money now. Hi, Sir Dennis, welcome. I have more capacity to hold on to large quantities of money and not use it reckless. In fact, I only would, I never borrow for education anymore. I learned my lessons. Never do that. <laughs> Look at all the people with those school loans, like, oh my God. So I don't borrow for education. What I borrow for is to create assets. Assets are things that pay you passive income, pay you revenue. That's what I borrow for. Hi, running 5960. Now, I didn't learn that in the beginning. Okay, thanks for the heart. I didn't know that when I started out my journey, okay? I would borrow to do education. I would borrow to emotional borrowing. So here's the deal, financial maturity. Yeah, you could call it that. I got financially more mature. So now I can handle large amounts of debt, larger amounts of money. I have a six-figure net worth. Back when I started this out in 2009, my net worth was negative, negative 20. In 2010, my net, my net worth was negative 23,000, right? And now my net worth is um, a <clears throat> little over a hundred thousand. So I broke six figures. <sighs> That's so exciting. So there is a there is a method. There is a way. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know, I quit my job in 2016 December. I was working at a bank, so I don't work a job anymore. I'm a full time mom and a part time entrepreneur. So I do a blog called YesFinanciallyFree.com. If you've never been there, go visit Yes Financially Free. Dot Com. All right, and then you can put in your name, email, get on my email list, and then you can see this on my blog. I'm actually broadcasting live on my blog from YouTube Live, which is embedded in my blog right now. So if you're on YouTube, you can see me, and if you're not, if you're on my blog, you can see me live too because I'm broadcasting live. So let's get into the topic. All right, I'm going to get started. So now you know about me and who I am and why you might ever listen to me <laughs> talk about these things, right? You guys, um, hello, welcome. Uh, I just want you to know my background so you understand why Why would you listen to me, right? Who is this girl? What is she talking about? So I actually did have a lot of debt, paid it all off, have passive income, don't look a job. Went on five weeks of vacation last year, bought a condo in Mike's Key. Now I'm looking at investment properties. I was researching them yesterday. So I definitely went from lack of money to having money, all right? So now I'm going to help you guys. So let's talk. Thanks. Welcome, guys. Hi, Kitchen. Hi, man. I was just sorry. Okay. So these are, today's topic, like I said, is nine heartfelt methods to create wealth in real life, all right? So these are real methods that I've used that have helped me a lot that I'm going to teach to you. And this is for people who are like me, who are very emotional, irrational, who weren't happy with their life, who were not good with money because, you know, life happens, you know? I mean, one of the biggest attractions of wealth is when you have a bad relationship, right? You're in a good relationship, everything's working out, you break up, and then you're so depressed. You don't care, right? You go, you know, the stereotype, typical, you go to a bar, you drink all your money away, you know, kind of things, just stupid things, right? People get very emotional, all right? So it's really, really important we look at that because if you do not look at the emotions of money and you do not look at how to create a more mature financial life, then you will never have great wealth because you will always have your emotions get rid of it for you. All right, hi, RS3211. The good news, the good news is there is a way, there are ways to create wealth and to curb all this, to have your emotions align with your wealth so that you do create great wealth. So here is the first method, all right? I call it um, the forgiveness exercise with the is it possible technique, all right? <laughs> so what is, this, what is this about? Good morning. Hey, oh my God. I you guys haven't seen in forever. Good morning. Nice to see you. You got on just in time. We're doing heartfelt exercise. Thanks for the hearts. I appreciate it. I have a super fan on who loves getting hearts and I love hearts. Love the appreciation, thank you. So we're gonna talk about the first method. Now this method is, I'm gonna take it from this book, which I highly recommend. Um, I read this book back when I was not happy, all right? And it's called Happy For No Reason by Marcy Shimoff, all right? <laughs> so it's a good book. It helps you understand how to become happier, all right? 
So I am much happier than what I used to be, like much happier, <laughs> just to let you guys know. Now, this book helped a lot. I read through the whole book. It's kind of a big book, but I read through the whole book. I bought it at an airport. I bought it at an airport. I think I was on my way to Extreme Health, uh, a seminar called Extreme Health, and that's when I bought this book. I think that was when I bought it. Hi, close to 9 y Welcome. So this book, Happy for No Reason, has an exercise in it I'm going to go over with you guys, and this is method number one. All right, and it's called Forgiveness Process. And she talks about forgiveness in here and why we should forgive. So maybe we'll talk about that first before we do the exercise. Hi, SD, you this. Welcome. Ms. Gilt, thanks for joining in. So few of us, why forgive? You know, why Why should we do forgiveness? You know, why is that important for wealth or anything, right? <laughs> now, some of you might already know, but let's talk about it. Because some people might be like, I don't see what it has to do with, you know, buying apartments and making passive income and whatever. So let's talk about it. Few of us are faced with experience. Okay, why is it so hard to forgive? Here are five main reasons. We think forgiveness means condoning the wrong action. You know, we think forgiving means it's okay. What you did is okay, right? We think forgiveness means we have to let the person back into our lives, and we don't want to do that, right? Hi, Phyllis again. We think feeling hatred for that person so much somehow gives us control, or power, or strength. We feel that if we forgive, we might get hurt again. All right, and we want to punish the person that made us unhappy, the offender. Hi, Dana, 2013, welcome. Okay, so it's important to forgive. Forgiveness is actually nothing more than self healing and self empowerment. It's like a miracle medicine, it's free, it works, it has no side effects. <laughs> All right, so forgiveness is not erasing what happened. The question, how are the school system where you live? How is the school system where I live? Um, well, my chiropractor moved here from Idaho, I think, because of the school system, so it must be pretty good. All right, so this is the forgiveness practice, and this is the heartfelt method number one to wealth. All right? So here we go. Hi, behind time, welcome. Sit, sit someplace where you will not be disturbed. All right, so we're sitting somewhere where we're not going to be disturbed. All right? Close your eyes and think of someone you are holding anger, hatred, or resentment toward in your heart. All right? So think of someone you want, you're going to forgive, right? Maybe you don't want to forgive them right now. So think of someone that you hate, you're really mad at, you know. And when I did this exercise, there were people I definitely hated at the time. Okay? Hello. Take a couple of deep breaths. Right? Let yourself feel feel your feelings without having to do anything about them. Just notice. So you're thinking about this person that you hate or you have resentment toward, something like that. You're just thinking about them and letting the feelings come. You're not trying to change them. Right? Number four. Now realize that the person's hurtful action can't be changed. It's in the past. Can you just keep in mind? Welcome. It's in the past. And there's absolutely nothing that can be done to affect it now. Feel the finality of it, all right? So it's done. What's done is done. What happened, happened. There's nothing that can be changed now because it happened already, all right? That's the first thing. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Also realize that this person may never change. They are the way they are. Take a few deep breaths as you accept the truth of that, all right? So this person that you're mad at, they're not going to change, all right? <laughs> Number six, now see the person in the... See that, that the person is the way they are. They are the way they are. Take a few breaths, deep breaths as you accept the truth of that, right? This person is the way he is or she is. They are not changing. Bible study, I'm sure that's good. Uh, now see the person is the way they are, did whatever they did because they have some pain, all right? Some lack some moodiness. They may not even realize it themselves, but it's there. They may not even, uh, people hurt others only because they are hurt themselves. So see them through the eyes of compassion for their own suffering. Imagine that they are a child that is hurting, lashing out at others in their own pain. Can you feel compassion for them? Okay. Number seven, sit quietly for a moment or two. 
just feeling the expansion that compassion in any amount brings to the heart. Okay, so this I found was very helpful for giving because one of the reasons that I was really bad with money oftentimes is that I was mad at somebody. It might have been somebody else, it might have been myself, right? Um, one of the reasons that sometimes that I I did like those different things to like figure out ways to get, you know, make money quickly, you know, see things that pop up on the internet and things. Sometimes it's because you're mad at yourself. Um, because you don't feel like you're you're doing as well as you should, right? The position that you're in, you feel like you could have done more. Um, maybe you feel like I'm more than where I am, but why am I doing so poorly? And then that was one of the things that I did. And because I felt that way about myself, I created bad money habits, all right? So forgiving is a really good exercise. So try that one. You can do it on yourself, too. <laughs> you don't have to do it on other people. Now, I add this one thing in this one is if you really have a hard time forgiving, and this is the same for all of the things that I talk about today, the nine methods, you have problems with these methods. Um, another way to look at it is to ask yourself the question, is it possible, right? Sometimes when it's really hard for me to forgive someone, myself or someone else, the way to break through the barrier is to ask myself, is it possible? For me to forgive this person is it possible so maybe now not right maybe now it's like i cannot forgive myself i cannot forgive whoever but is it possible that you could forgive yourself or whoever maybe in the future on a different day you could say is it possible for me to forgive this person you know next month <laughs> this will help okay because this will break through emotional barriers that you feel like you can't get over so instead of just getting over it now you can ask yourself is it possible that one day I'll get over it and that can help you get closer so that's heartfelt method number one let's go to heartfelt method number two and that is accept compliments All right this is a cool one I remember I used to go to Kung Fu training and one of the things that we were told to do is to compliment people. Yeah, that was Kung Fu training. Not kidding me. Okay. We had to think about every person we met. We had to think about what was so great about them. Like, think about what is so wonderful about this person and then just compliment them. And uh, that was part of our training. So we're going to talk about accepting compliments. And this is from the book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. All right. So this is from, hey, Che, welcome back, page 148, all right? So page 148, accept compliments, all right? And this is in the chapter on prosperity. So this is in the chapter about how to create wealth, right? How to create wealth. And uh, in this one, accept compliments. So, so many people, I'm doing great, how are you? So many people want to be rich, yet they won't accept a compliment. So this is really interesting, right? What does accepting a compliment have to do with being rich? Let's talk about it. I have known many budding actors and actresses who want to be stars. Hi, Envision. Nice to see you again. And yet they cringe when they're paid a compliment. Right? Compliments are gifts of prosperity. Learn to accept them graciously. My mother taught me early to smile and say thank you when I receive a compliment or gift. This advice has been an asset all my life. It is even better to accept the compliment and return it so the giver feels as though he or she has received a gift. It's a way of keeping the flow of good going. All right? Rejoice in the abundance of being able to awaken each morning and experience a new day. Hi, Dr. Waz. Hi, Emily. I'm always tuning your live stream thank you it's okay it's okay to be late thanks for tuning in you can always watch the replay if you're late yeah so rejoice in the buzz of being able to awaken each morning and experience a new day be glad to be alive be healthy to have friends to be creative to be a living example of the joy of living live your highest awareness and enjoy the transformational process okay so that's heartfelt method number two to wealth is to accept compliments thanks for the heart 
oftentimes the little things in our lives are what create true wealth. And you might be like, oh, that's so esoteric. What does it have to do with getting real money? And I can tell you that compliments, <laughs> complimenting might be one of the most important skills you could ever have to create wealth. And um, I, I see that to my husband. And he's very good with people, very good at talking to people, very good at complimenting people. He has a huge cash flow compared to me. All right, money comes his way. It's like seeing rain flow. You know, <laughs> so do not underestimate the power of compliments. Accept compliments. You know, give compliments. But mostly, if you're having a lot of difficulty in your life, and you're where I used to be, where money was really hard, then learn to accept compliments. Right, accept them, let them in your life, let good things come in. I, re I remember one person I wanted to treat him to lunch and he wouldn't accept it, right? Wouldn't accept it. And I was like, dude, it's free lunch, wouldn't take it, right? Won't accept good things coming in his life, and that's what was blocking his wealth and prosperity. He wouldn't let things come in, even money like me paying for his lunch. That's like money coming into your life right there. You're right, how, how do I get wealthy? Maybe you're blocking it off and not letting anyone give you anything. Like maybe you're not letting them give you prosperity. Maybe you're not letting money come in and you're not accepting. All right. And that might be one of the biggest, biggest barriers that you have right now. So start by accepting compliments and then accept money. <laughs> accept all the good things in your life. Let it come in. Take it in. All right. So that's heartfelt method number two. Okay. So if you feel like you're not enough, you're not a good person, and someone tells you how great you are, accept it. Feel it. All right? Method number three. Happy for no reason. This is the loving kindness practice. All right? So this is also from the book Happy for No Reason. We're going to do the loving kindness practice. So these are all methods. Like I said, nine heartfelt methods to create wealth. These methods all work. Pick the one you like. Do all nine. Let's get this book. It has like a million. But let's do number 145. I'm going to do it right now. Ready? Loving kindness. I'm so, welcome. Can't say anything right. But anyway. <laughs> Loving kindness practice. This exercise expands your capacity for compassion by guiding you through the process of wishing loving kindness to yourself and others. One of the greatest things um, of abundance and wealth, when you... Um, want a lot of wealth a lot of times you focus on yourself you know and that's where you get stuck right because economic flow is, is a circle right it's a, it's a cycle if you get stuck thanks to the heart they're so appreciated if you get stuck on yourself you block the flow of money through you right so let's let's do this exercise together loving kindness practice this exercise expands your capacity for compassion by guiding you through the process of wishing loving kindness to yourself and others Find a quiet place and sit comfortably. Close your eyes. Okay, close your eyes, right? I'm not going to close them because we got to read, but you guys can close your eyes while you're listening. You can do it while I, while I talk. Take a slow, deep breath. Be aware of the breath as it enters and leaves your body. Let your thoughts come and go. Right? And just let it go. Whatever comes, comes. Whatever goes, goes. Number three. Repeat the following phrases silently. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Continue fe with feeling these wishes toward yourself for a minute or two or until you experience a sense of peace inside. Now yeah, say them again. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Number four. Now move on to your friends and family. Picture one of them as you send the following wishes silently. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. All right. So we're thinking about someone that we love. Our friends or family, picture one of them and send those thoughts to them, right? May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. And then you can continue sending these wishes until you feel a flow of love in your heart. So this exercise really brings out love, right? Now, when you're feeling emotional and you're not aligned with wealth, 
you generally feel hatred, depression, you know, lower feelings. So if you want to bring wealth, wealth into your life, you need to bring higher vibrational feelings into your life. So by sending happiness to others, it really opens your heart up. And every time I did this exercise, I felt good after. It was like, oh, you know, like, all right. Now send them wish. Now send these wishes to all the living beings around the world, and continue until you feel a sense of expansion in your heart. All right. So this is the loving kindness exercise, which is heartfelt practice number three. All right. So now we're going to do heartfelt method number four to wealth. All right. Heartfelt method number four: practice fair exchange. One of the ways that we create great wealth in our lives is that we do it through fair exchange. What does that mean? Well, if you buy and sell things, let's say you, you go and you buy something and you're satisfied with it, you really like it. Maybe it's your laundry detergent, whatever, okay? Maybe it's diapers. If you're a parent, you definitely really need diapers, right? So whatever you buy, you know, maybe you, you feel like it's a good, good use of your money, right? You, you, it was worth it, right? So that's what we call... Fair exchange. Hi, Twitter man. Welcome. So fair exchange means that you pay for it, you like it, it was a fair exchange. And, and it's the opposite, too. When you sell things, like your job, you do certain services for people. Or if you have a business, um, like my business, I help people create passive income, you know, reduce debt, create financial freedom. That's what I do in my business. Um, when my members my mastermind members actually create passive income they start paying themselves you know they start saving paying themselves first they start seeing how they can create wealth in their life that makes me feel like you know i did value for them and then when they pay me i feel like it was a good exchange all right so fair exchange is really important because the principle of fair exchange will give you money in your life because when you give service people will pay you for it right that's the principle of fair exchange. Now, we're going to do the exercise, okay? It's from this book, How to Make One Hell of a Profit and Still Get to Heaven by Dr. John D. Martini. Okay? Let's take a look. This one is on page 33 of this book. So we're going to do this. This is another method. And let's do the method, all right? Okay, fair exchange, right? We all understand fair exchange. I hope so. If not, rewind. The fair exchange is important for wealth, right? If you do not feel like we're in fair exchange, we'll feel like we're cheating something or ourselves. Okay, exercise. Look back over your life and think of someone to whom you feel you owe a debt, right? Someone who gave, who gave you money, time, support, or a gift, right? Or a kindness that you don't feel you repaid adequately. When you identify that person, do either or both of the following things. Ready? Into the heart. High 12, 12. Number one, ask yourself, what did I do to, reserve, to deserve what I received from them? Into the heart. In your journal, write down all the ways you earned the gift. Keep writing until you feel that you're back in equal exchange. When you discover enough ways or hit the big one, you'll have an unmistakable sensation of relief. It would be like an unconscious tension relaxing or an invisible wall coming down and your whole perception of that person changing. Okay? So that's the first step. Number two, if you can't see how you earned what they gave you, ask yourself, what could I do for them or give to them that would equal what they gave to me? All right, then do it. This can really open your heart to anyone who you've been keeping on the outside, either consciously or unconsciously. Hi, Kevon. Welcome to school. Keep going with every single unbalanced relationship you can remember throughout your entire life. Follow the same steps with, with them all. Find out either what you've already done to deserve what you received, in which case the imbalance was only in your perception, for what you could do to deserve it and balance it out in your consciousness. You may pay for the gifts you've been given with money, a gift, a letter of true appreciation, or heartfelt words of acknowledgement. 
do whatever feels appropriate, but awaken or return to fair exchange and watch the effects of your life unfold. This exercise will bring into balance and back into the present any mental fragments that have been scattered throughout a lifetime of perceived imbalances. Eventually, you'll learn to do these steps spontaneously at the very moment of interaction, bringing you a quantum leap in your power and potential. The truth is that every exchange is already balanced, whether you know it or not, but not until you see and feel it will you get the energy and freedom back. Okay, so that one is really important. I remember there was this professor once that helped me get into grad school, and I never actually thanked him properly. And I felt guilty, like I didn't actually, I did thank him when he helped me. Like I was in his office, gave me advice, he said thank you. But I felt like I didn't thank him enough. So I actually felt guilty about that for years. Like years, I felt guilty about this one professor. Hi, okay, teacher, welcome back. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, he helped me and I did not properly thank him. And that guilt took how much of my mental anxiety, how much, I mean, it's ridiculous. So that's something you can do with this exercise. Do you feel like someone gave you something and you didn't deserve it? Do you feel like someone gave you something and you didn't thank them properly? Right, so right now, if I were to do this exercise, I would write down all the ways I earned that advice. You know, he was a professor, that's what he does for a living. You know, he sits in his office, he gives people help, it makes him happy. And it was just something he knew off the top of his head and just told me, right? So there's no reason that I should feel like I didn't properly think. How old are you if you don't mind me asking? I'm 41. <laughs> Okay. All right. So that's the exercise. I think this is a really good exercise. Um, feeling like you have inequitable exchanges really can drag you down. And it creates this sub unconscious urge to punish yourself, which I know all about. Okay. <laughs> Back when I had all those money issues, I'm like, why did I do that to myself? Why did I do this? Why did I create all this debt? Why did I make my life so difficult? You know, it really really actually punked me at the time. I was like, why? I'm a smart person. Why did I put myself in this mess? And um, there was a bunch of things that I didn't know were underneath, you know, underneath, inside, that I felt guilty about. People were good to me, and I felt like I didn't deserve it. Hi, Redisy, welcome. And I just punished myself. Didn't know I was doing it. You know, it was all hidden underneath the surface. So really dig into your Dig into your feelings, dig into what is going on inside of you. Hi, Mado, Mado, whatever that was. <laughs> Welcome to this. When you do that, you clear out all these forces inside of you that are stopping you from creating what you want. All right, and maybe that's great. Well, maybe you want to own a place in YTC and go to the beach a lot. Who knows, whatever it is you want. But whatever it is you want, you know, you can have it if you clear out all this crap, you know. Let's move on to heartfelt method number five. Nourishing your body. Hi, I'm more the fur. Hi, Iron Car 123. I'm going to talk about this one. This one's a cool one. Uh, you know you can get moody and have really poor emotional control of your eating improperly? You know, if you do not have proper diet, you do not eat well, it, it can cause imbalances in how you feel. High blue O93 can throw off your hormones. It can do all kinds of stuff. And when that happens, you have mood swings. Woo, mood swings. <laughs> As a girl who used to have a lot of mood swings, I know all about this. So if you eat properly, you can actually balance out that stuff. And one of the things I've noticed, especially for women, is if you do not eat when you're hungry, you will get moody, right? And then things will think, seem worse than they are, yeah, eating properly, I know, it's kind of funny, nourishing your body, having proper health, right, will help you have better wealth, now, you might think that's crazy, one of the first seminars I went to in LA, when I started going to a lot of seminars with extreme health, and I got a diet recommendation from, doc, from Dr. Pankaj Narak. And that diet recommendation was given to me when I was actually sick. I had a cold. I went to the seminar, got a cold. And uh, I went to him. He did a pulse reading. 
this is something pulse reading, right? Read my pulse, and uh, he told me that because of my diet, you know, my memory was not as good, right? My memory was not as good. And uh, there are also some things that I had to let go of, you know, all different things he told me. It was really interesting. He, he can tell you crazy stuff that's like, wow, that's so true about me, right? As zero nine zero zero one. Periscope, and so I was like, okay. He gave he gave everybody this one diet. Everyone got the same diet. So I started following the diet, and it really changed my life. And I'm not I'm not even gonna lie. Okay, so some of you are thinking, you know, your emotions run your life, but your emotions are actually a lot of it is chemical. You know, you you don't think that, you know, because you're like my emotions are so real, but a lot of it's just chemical, and it's it's from eating what you what you feed yourself. So on my blog, I'm going to attach the diet, but I'm going to go over it super, super quick. It, just so you guys have it, um, but in, like I said, you, you cannot imagine how much a diet can affect your emotions, but it, it, it does. So if you eat properly, um, you'll be healthy, you know, you'll, you'll be more attractive, you'll be healthier, you'll have more energy, right? You'll, you'll be happy. It's just, It'll just help you in so many ways. Plus, plus on top of that, if you're healthy, you don't have to pay for doctors, right? How much do doctors cost, right? When you're old, you don't have to worry about this whole long-term care stuff and all this stuff everyone's freaking out about, right? Because if you eat properly and you take good care of your health, you will be active and lively when you're old. Now, this diet was told to Dr. Naram in Nepal, right? Oh, there's a quote from Dr. Baba Ramdasji. Hi, Yusu. Welcome. Uh, Periscope. So he said, create strong digestion, improve your immunity. These are powerful principles of eating that can change your life forever. Okay. Now, when Dr. Naran was telling me about this diet, which I'm going to tell you guys about, he was talking about how his teacher would go, they were, they, you know, in Nepal, they would go hiking in the Himalayan mountains or something like that, right? And he's 120 years old, you know, something, they're 120 something years old, and he's hiking up this mountain, and he has this little thing he made, this paste thing with ginger and whatever, whatever, and garlic, who knows? And they're, they're going up this mountain, and so these are people who are like 100 something years old, and they're still walking up mountains, okay? So if you were this healthy, you don't have to worry about health insurance. You don't have to worry about long-term care. You don't have to worry about all these hospital expenses. Half of bankruptcies, 50% bankruptcies, I, I was reading something and said that 50% of bankruptcies are caused from health reasons, right? Medical reasons. Uh, one of my mastermind members dropped out because, well, she didn't actually drop out, but she's not as active because she got cancer. So this is a real issue. People you know, don't realize how much health and your eating will affect your wealth. But it's, it's a huge factor. So here's the diet. We'll go through it. I'll, I'll just read through it so you guys understand what the diet is. And uh, it's your choice whether to follow it. I follow this diet. I don't follow it super strict, but I do follow it. Hi, Grigori, and it has helped me immensely. I have more energy. I don't fall asleep after I eat lunch. You know, some people, they eat lunch and they have food coma. I don't, I don't ever get food coma, right? Um, I have perfect blood work, okay? So if you go to the doctor, they take your blood, they check everything. My blood works perfect. I just checked it like a month, two months ago, last month, the end of January. And it's perfect. You know, no, the doctor was like... You got an A plus. No one's ever come in here with perfect blood work like you. Everyone has some problem, but you have no problem. So, so this will help with things like that. So I have no issues. Okay, very healthy. You know. Okay, so let's let's do it. All right. So foods that you can enjoy boost your metabolism. Become wise. Learn which foods, vegetables, and fruits can increase risk of creating and accumulating AAM toxins, which creates loss. Right. The following recommendations will help you to balance the three doshas, create strong digestion, and a healthy immune system. Even if you are able to follow only one or two of the recommendations at first, you will find that over time you can incorporate more changes. It's important to be consistent, enjoy your food, right? 
The first rule is only eat when you're hungry. <laughs> only eat when you're hungry. Do not eat large meals at night. Leave two hours after eating before you go to sleep. Drink half an hour for half drink half an hour before or half an hour after meals. Don't drink during meals. If you feel like you need to drink during a meal, enjoy warm beverages, room temperature beverages. Avoid icy drinks at all times. Hi, Essie Lussler. Welcome. In general, foods that are cooked, moist, light, and easy to digest are preferable because they do not disturb vata and pizza or create toxins. Okay? Vegetables to enjoy are parsnip, rutabaga, sweet potato, taro root, turnip, yam, beetroot, carrot, beet, onion, shallot, leek, garlic, ginger, arugula, beet greens, collard greens, kale, mustard greens, spinach, Swiss chard, turnip greens, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, Chinese cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, acorn squash, pumpkin, butternut, spaghetti squash, bok choy, celery, chicory, endive, bell peppers, but not green ones, okay? Um, sweet corn, sweet peppers, artichoke, asparagus, fennel, kohlrabi, Jerusalem artichoke, water chestnuts, zucchini, seaweed, basically all vegetables except the vegetables mentioned. Cabbage and bok choy! <laughs> I was excited about cabbage and bok choy. <laughs> it is highly recommended to consume green leafy vegetables daily. Okay? This is the one that will shock people in America, in the United States, anyway. Tomatoes in any form, including these are foods that you should never eat. Foods to avoid, not never, but avoid them. Tomatoes. You don't eat tomatoes. Tomato paste, tomato sauce, ketchup, cooked tomatoes, etc. Right? Eggplants, okra, potatoes. San Diego, welcome San Diego. Potatoes in any form, including red skin potatoes, potato chips, french fries, baked potatoes. A note, sweet potatoes and yams are not from the potato family, so you can eat them, except if you have diabetes, in which case you should not eat them. I think you're welcome. Mushrooms, don't eat mushrooms. No raw vegetables and no salad. A lot of people be like, oh my god. <laughs> All vegetables must be thoroughly cooked. Okay. So that's the first part. So if that already stopped you, you're like, oh my god, that's amazing. A lot of people will say, I can't just eat vegetables, I have nothing to eat. You know, there's, I think that's the reason they listed so many vegetables, because people think there are like no vegetables, like there's no variety in people eat vegetables. There's so much variety. Okay, healthy fruits, powerful source of antioxidants. Fruits to enjoy, pomegranates and papayas are highly recommended. And even for people with diabetes, you can enjoy pomegranates and papayas. Although all other fruits due to their high sugar content are to be completely avoided if you have if you have diabetes, right? Fruits are to be enjoyed ripe and sweet, seasonably and preferably locally grown. Enjoy below this fruit when they're in season. Okay? Apples, pears, apricots, grapes, cherries, plums, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, fresh figs, cantaloupe, peaches, lychee, coconut, gooseberry. First, the men enjoy mangoes if they are ripe and sweet. Thanks for joining the live, guys. Uh, enjoy mangoes if they are ripe and sweet. No, bananas are cold in nature and they create mucus. Enjoy them in warm weather, or you may eat very ripe or cooked bananas during cooler times. Okay, fruits to avoid. Okay, ready? I add this along. Welcome. Citrus fruits such as oranges, lemons, limes, tangerines, and grapefruits are not recommended. You may enjoy oranges and tangerines occasionally if they are not sour. Dried fruits are hard to digest. Please soak them overnight or cook them to become soft and then they will be easily digested. Now I know a lot of people in the United States will, I mean, you just eat dried fruit, you know, trail mixes for snacks. There's no soaking overnight, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I know some of that. This diet is very different from the American diet. Which is probably a good thing because a lot of Americans are really unhealthy. So, <laughs> Dairy, milk products to enjoy. Of all the milk products, ghee, G-H-E-E, clarified butter, is the only beneficial recommended product for its medicinal balancing properties. 
he will balance all three doshas, vata, pizza, and kapha. Please use ghee in moderation. The recommended amount is one to two teaspoons per day. Fresh cheese, such as fresh soft cheese, such as Pink of the Heart, Val Island, cottage cheese, ricotta cheese, fresh feta cheese, and pini are preferred for occasional consumption. Right? And small amounts of milk mixed with spices to drink with tea can be digested. Adding some cinnamon or turmeric or other spices to just fresh ground ginger or ground cardamom and boiling together will help with the digestion of milk. Right? So that's the milk thing. You want to avoid milk products to avoid milk products are to be avoided due to mucus producing qualities that cause digestion problems. So it is recommended that children over the age of two stop drinking milk and substitute milk with almond milk, rice milk, health milk, oat milk, coconut milk, and soy milk. All right. So that's something that Americans don't do. Like, drink milk, drink milk. <laughs> Old eggs and hard cheeses, cheeses are to be completely avoided, as is buttermilk, sour cream, processed cheeses, lassi, yogurt, due to its sourness and fermentation is damaging to the bone. To the digestive tract creates inflammation and arthritis. How about pizza group? <laughs> this is all for yogurt and yogurt dessert for you. Yeah, pizza. I, I eat pizza at um, Down to Earth. They have a, not Down to Earth. Yeah, I do at Down to Earth. But uh, there's a Whole Foods has pizza that's gluten free. We haven't even gotten there yet. Did we get there? Did we go to Korea? They said not to eat any wheat. And then I don't put roast, I put vegan cheese on it, and I don't put any tomato sauce on it. I put like garlic and olive oil and something like that. It's really good. It does the only place I eat pizza. Pulses, beans to enjoy. The king of all beans in the food has always been mung beans. Mung beans, they're these little green beans if you don't know what mung beans are. You can enjoy mung in the whole grain form or split yellow mung. Mung in all forms is easy to digest. It's full of nutrients and in itself is a wonderful nourishing meal. Thank you. Someone said I'm sweet. I'm sweet. Tour dal lentils and other beans could also be enjoyed. Sprouted mung can be used but needs to be cooked. All right. So there you go for mung beans. Pulses to consume in moderation. Pulses means beans, by the way. The heavier starcher beans like chana dal, chickpeas, black eyed peas, kiffy beans, soybeans, edamame, high ABC, welcome, can be can be taken occasionally and must be soaked overnight and cooked thoroughly. Okay? Grains to enjoy millet, amaranth, quinoa, kamut, spelt, corn, oats, rye, buckwheat, rice, and wild rice. Instead of wheat, and that's whole wheat and white. Use spelt flour to make all your baked goods. If you're wondering if white bread is made of wheat, I will tell you right now that yes, white bread is made of wheat. So don't eat white bread. Don't eat wheat bread or white bread, okay? <laughs> so funny, when I told people this, they're like, oh, I can't eat wheat bread, then I just eat white bread. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> people don't know that white bread is made of wheat. It's so funny. That, uh, anyway, don't eat wheat bread. Good luck with that, right? So American diet, like I said, if you're on the typical American diet, you might be listening to this and be like, so different from what you, what you eat. Wheat is the absolute most difficult grain to and should be avoided at all times, right? Wheat carries many blocks and inflammation in the body, I, especially the digestive tract, right? Dr. Neuron strongly suggests substituting any of the above grains Instead of wheat, you can also use spelt. It's very similar to wheat. I had spelt brownies yesterday. They were very good. You know, they weren't made of wheat on a mess of food. <laughs> Avoid whole wheat, white flour, whole cover flour, cake flour, wheat crackers, store bought crackers, breakfast cereal, thickeners. Many snack foods are made from wheat. Don't eat snack foods. They're made from wheat. <laughs> Big to the heart. Oils to enjoy. Pure vegetable and canola oils are the best for cooking. Olive oil is beneficial when used. Extra olive, extra virgin form, and drizzled on top of cooked dishes. But you cannot cook olive oil, right? Peanut mustard oil should be avoided, and uh, margarine, lard, Crisco cooking sprays, 
imitation oils, do not ever use them, completely avoid them. Hi, I'm not welcome. Okay, seeds and nuts to enjoy. Pumpkin, sesame, poppy, sunflower, pine nuts, almonds, walnuts, hazel, hazelnuts, pistachios. You can eat those, they said, in small amounts. All right, they are more just easily digested if you cook them, ground them, soak them overnight, make them into a paste, or make them into milk. Okay? The milk and cream and flakes of coconut can be used. The seeds and nuts to avoid, <laughs> this is a fun one, right? Avoid peanuts, cashews, peanut butter. Okay, you can use almond butter instead, all right? So, like I said, when I, I don't really eat out very much, and I don't really, you know, people will give me things with peanuts and it's not, I just won't eat it, honestly. If, if I don't want to hurt their feelings, I'll take it, and then I'll throw it away. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, that's what I do. So I don't eat peanuts. Cashew nuts are in so many things. I noticed a lot of health bars with cashews. I don't eat cashews because of this, right? Proteins to enjoy. Eggs and tofu, you can enjoy in moderation. Avoid S-E-I-T-A-N, which is made of wheat gluten, or Q-U-O-R-N, which is a fungus protein isolate. I don't eat that stuff. I don't even know what it is. But <clears throat> Sweeteners, you can enjoy jaggery, <clears throat> agave, honey, maple syrup. Avoid refined sugar, artificial sweeteners like aspartame, people, nutrisweet, saccharin, sucralose, xylitol, sorbitol. They're all toxic, right? Honey, you can add it to tea after after the tea is cooled down. If you add it to hot tea, it's toxic. It's my heart. Drinks to enjoy. Tea and coffee, you can drink. Some of you are thinking, thank God, I can still drink my coffee, right? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. So. You can drink them in moderation. Ginger tea, made from fresh ginger root, is warming. Agni increasing removes mucus and toxins. Excellent remedy for cold coughs. Plain hot water is good for clearing the digestive, digestive tract. Fresh vegetable and fruit juices are very nourishing. Should be avoided in cold weather or while suffering from cold. Drinks to avoid. I think you can guess what not to drink, right? All soft drinks, Coke, Diet Coke, Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, root beer, caffeinated, decaffeinated, sugar-free, flavored water, uh, Gatorade, vitamin water, Red Bull, all that, don't drink it. <laughs> I notice that young people, instead of drinking coffee, they'll bring Red Bull to work. When I worked at the bank, a lot of people brought Red Bull. Thanks for the heart. Hey, our artists, don't drink it if you, if you want to have a long life. And healthy. Okay, spices to enjoy. Cumin, coriander, fennel, saffron, black pepper. You can enjoy fresh ginger root, ginger powder, turmeric, cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, mustard seeds, fenugreek, nutmeg, dill, anise, basil, oregano, poppy seeds, marjoram, sage. My live is going to end soon on um, Instagram, so I should be wrapping this up. Thyme, bay leaf, all these things, minerals, salt. Avoid microwave foods, canned foods, processed foods. Okay, so I'm done with the diet. So Instagram gone. Bye Instagram. Still have Periscope. I still have um, YouTube Live. So we're going to continue on. Okay. So we just finished this. So that was the healthy diet recommendation by Dr. Naram, which was heartfelt method number five. I don't know why they don't just drink a cup of black coffee cheaper and less helpful. Interesting. Yeah, I know. I don't drink coffee. It's too strong. Like, it makes my heart beat differently, and I think that's weird. Hi, <laughs> Jack 47. It never helped me stay awake, by the way. Yeah. It is less harmful, yeah. Um, the thing about coffee drinking is a lot of people drink coffee because they don't get enough sleep. That's really the whole. If people got enough sleep, they would never drink coffee. That's actually one of the biggest reasons people drink coffee, just because they're not sleeping enough. <laughs> so if you just got more sleep, you can stop drinking coffee altogether. That some of you are like, what? Get more sleep? How's that possible? I'm so busy. Nah, nah. You'll get there one day. You'll get there one day. <laughs> okay. I used to be so unhealthy. You know, I didn't get enough sleep. That was what I did in my early 20s, my teens, you know, when I was in college. Didn't get enough sleep. I think a lot of college students do that. And that really is one of the most harmful things you can do to your body. Um, 
yeah, sleep is just great. So if you get enough sleep, you probably won't drink so much coffee. You won't need to drink tea or coffee. I never drink coffee. I, I hardly ever drink tea. I really, I don't drink, I usually just drink water. That's all I drink. Sometimes I drink some juice um, with mixed with water if I'm hungry kind of deal or if I feel like sugar or something. But it's not really juice. It's like a Hi, Andrew. Welcome. Okay, so that was heartfelt method number five. Let's do heartfelt method number six, and that's hormone balance. So that one you can find in this book. Happy for no reason. Hi. Happy for no reason. Um, it's on page 163. Really interesting. One of the reasons your emotions might be out of control and you might be losing a lot of wealth to your emotions is because your hormones aren't balanced. Good to see you. Welcome to her. Welcome to my scope. Thanks for joining in. Really appreciate you. Okay, so here is the questionnaire. So if you can find out if your hormones are balanced. So I just went through how to eat properly. <laughs> I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? So hormones. Let's talk about it. The four-part mood type questionnaire. Write down the number next to each symptom listed below that that you identify with. Total your score in each section and compare it to a cutoff mm -hmm. score. If your score is over the cutoff, or if you have only a few of the symptoms, but they bother you on a regular basis, learn more about the amino acid indicated in Julia Ross's book, The Mood Cure. Or at her website, www.moodcure.com. The exciting news is that you can easily get the amino acids your brain needs from nutritional supplements. And you can experience your moods improve in a short time as your neurotransmitters get the fuel that they need. Okay, so if you you're not good with anything in your life because of your mood swings, then this will help you, right? Part one, are you under a dark cloud? If so, your serotonin levels may be low. I used to do, I used to be under a dark cloud. Back when my finances were really bad, I could definitely tell you I was under a dark cloud. So this will help if you are under a dark cloud. So do you have a tendency, I don't know why I posted this, I don't know why your numbers are like that. But anyway, let's just do this. So write down the number next to each symptom listed below that you identify with. Oh, I see. So there's a number next to the symptom. So if you have the symptom, write the number down, right? So if this is something that you have, write the number. If you need a piece of paper, do this. If you need to grab a piece of paper or, you know, something, take notes, you can total your numbers, right? Okay, so this is a three. So if you have this, write down three. Do you have a tendency to be negative, to see the glass as half empty rather than half full? Do you have dark, pessimistic thoughts? That's a three. Are you often worried, anxious? Three. Do you have feelings of low self-esteem, lack of confidence? Do you easily get the feeling self-critical or guilty? Three. Do your, does your behavior often get a bit or a lot obsessive? Is it hard for you to make transitions, to be flexible? Are you a perfectionist, a neatnik, control freak, computer TV, or work addict? I think I might be a little low on serotonin. Holy cow. Do you, number three, do you really dislike the dark weather or have a clear cut fall winter depression? Two, are you apt to be irritable, impatient, edgy, or angry? Three, do you tend to be shy or fearful? Do you get nervous or panicky about heights, flying, and close spaces, public performance, snakes, spiders, bridges, crowds, leaving the house, or anything else? Two, have you had anxiety attacks or panic attacks? Your heart races, it's hard to breathe. Two, do you get PMS or menopausal moodiness, tears, anger, depression? Three, do you hate hot weather? Two, are you a night owl or do you often find it hard to get to sleep even though you want to? Two, do you wake up in the night, have restless or light sleep or wake up too early in the morning? Three, do you routinely like to have sweet or starchy snacks or wine in the afternoon, evenings, in the middle of the night, but not early in the day? Two, do you find relief from any of the above symptoms through exercise? Three, have you had fibromyalgia or TMJ? Two, have you had suicidal thoughts or plans? So you total your score, and if your score is more than 12, you may have a serotonin deficiency. Uh, I think I have a serotonin deficiency. Okay, <laughs> are you suffering from the blot? If so, your ketoquilone levels may be low. Blot. Three, do you often feel depressed, the flat, bored, apathetic kind? Two, 
Are you low on physical or mental energy? Do you feel tired a lot? Have to push yourself to exercise. Two. Is your drive, enthusiasm, and motivation on the low side? Two. Do you have difficulty focusing or concentrating? Three. Are you easily chilled? Do you have cold hands or feet? Two. Do you tend to put on weight too easily? Three. Do you feel the need to get more alert and motivated by consuming a lot of coffee, uppers like sugar, diet soda, and ethanol? So total that up. If your score is more than six, then you may be low on catecholamine. And that's C-A-T-E-C-H-O-L-A-M-I-N-E-S. Okay? <laughs> okay, three. Is your stress, is stress your problem? If so, your G-A-B-A level can be too low. Three. Do you often feel overwhelmed, pressured, or deadlines? One. Do you have trouble relaxing or loosening up? One. Does your body tend to be stiff, uptight, tense? Two, are you easily upset, frustrated, or snappy under stress? Three, are you easily chilled? Do you have cold hands or feet? Two, do you tend to put on weight too easily? Three, do you often feel overwhelmed as though you just can't get it all done? Two, do you feel weak or shaky at times? Three, are you sensitive to bright light, noise, or chemical fumes? Do you need to wear dark glasses all the time? Three, do you feel success, success is significantly worse if you skip meals or go too long without eating? Two, do you use tobacco, alcohol, food, or drugs to relax and calm down? If, you're, if you have more than eight here, you may be low on GABA. And part four, are you too sensitive to life's pain? If you're, if so, your endorphin levels may be too low. So three, do you consider yourself or others, do you can, others consider you to be very sensitive? Does your emotional pain or perhaps physical pain really get to you? Two, do you tear up or cry easily, for instance, even during TV commercials? <laughs> so that might be you. Two, um, do you tend to avoid dealing with painful situations? Three, do you find it hard to get over losses or get through grieving? Two, have you been through a great deal of physical and emotional pain? Three, do you crave pleasure, comfort, reward, enjoyment? Or numbing from treats like chocolate, bread, wine, romance, novels, tobacco, or latte. If you wrote more than six, you may be the one in the The good news with that is whatever you're low on, you can go get a chemical supplement and increase it. So there you have it. So that's hormone imbalance. Okay? Heartfelt method number seven is listen to your inner voice. Listen to your inner voice. And that um, oh, actually, also from this book. That is probably one of the biggest things that's helped me with starting a business, you know, putting a job. Hi, Glenn. Welcome. Is listening to your inner voice because a lot of what you need to know, you already know. But if you can't tap into your inner voice, it's really hard. One, two, three, you are welcome. So that's one of the methods that helped me a lot and can help you to get great well. So she has an exercise here on how to listen to your inner voice. And um, really tap in. So let's do that real quick. Inner listening. Find a quiet, comfortable place. Sit with a pen and a paper ready. At the top of the paper, write down a question or an issue that you'd like guidance about. Phrase the question or issue as clearly as possible. Close your eyes and take several deep breaths. Okay. Number four, ask your inner voice the question you wrote on the paper. It may take a few minutes until you feel ready. Hi, Kalsova, welcome. When you do, open your eyes, start writing whatever comes to you. Doesn't matter whether it makes sense or not, keep writing until your hand feels like it won't move any longer. Not reading what you have written as you go. Five, now read over what you've written. You may be quite surprised that wisdom has come out. Even a single word or phrase may be the key to your answer. Okay, so I often do that. I meditate in the morning. Ah, your phone died. It's okay. This is like a lot longer than I expected it to be, this, this live. Um, I listed all these exercises, but some of them are a lot longer than I thought. So thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. So um, this exercise is to tap into your inner listening, which helps, helps a lot because a lot of times my mastermind members won't know what to do with certain things. Like they won't know what to do with their money that they have. Maybe they have like a lot of money in a portfolio. Maybe it's in a mutual fund, maybe not. And they don't know whether they should move it or whatever. 
And I don't tell people what to do with their money. I'm not a financial planner. You know, you're, you have to decide what to do with your own money. However, if you have a question and you don't really know the answer and you're really thinking, how, how, how can I find the answer? Oftentimes, if you just breathe, close your eyes, and ask yourself the question, you will get the answer. Because for you, it's, everyone's different. Our circumstances are all different. There is no right or wrong in general, you have to know in your circumstances what the right answer is for you because you have to ask yourself. So understanding how to tap into your inner wisdom is really important. Okay, method number eight, and there's only nine, and then we're done, and then I'm probably going to eat because I'm, I'm hungry. i got to do doctoring around when you're hungry thing. <laughs> number eight, start with why. Okay. Start with Why is a book by Simon Sinek. I'm on low power now, too. I'm going to have to stop doing low power mode. Oh. can't stop this thing from the other way. Anyway, let's do this real quick. Start with Why. Simon Sinek, this book, he talks about starting with Why. Don't manipulate people, inspire people. So, this book is all about businesses, really. Why businesses like Apple and uh, Southwest Airlines and uh, different businesses have taken off and why some have died, like Betamax and all kinds of things. Why some things live, some things die. Walmart. That's Walmart. You have to start with why. So if you really want to be wealthy, it's really good to start with why you want to be wealthy. What is your big reason? If you do not have an idealistic reason or a why, it's going to be hard to create great wealth. And, uh, this book is really good. It talks a lot about different things in there, but it's really more about inspiring people. If you inspire people and you have a unique message that's true to your own heart in your business and what you do, if you're employed, if you have your own business, whatever it is that you do, if you start with why, then the business will thrive. People are attracted to that. And when people are attracted, they will spend money on it. And method number nine, that was a quick one, right? Method <laughs> number eight took like Method number nine, the last method. This is from a little book called The Greatest Manifestation Principle. Okay? In the World by Carnelian Sage. So, love is the answer, right? It's always the answer. But here we go. Last now, welcome. The greatest manifestation principle in the world. Love is the catalyst by which all good things happen. The effortless way to achieve your heart's desire is to let go of your attachment to results and focus on love instead. Bring the power of love to your pursuits and to all the people, relationships, resources, and events associated with your pursuits. The outcome you get may be different from what you had in mind, but it will be infinitely better than which you desire. All right, so love is the answer. Here are the steps to create whatever it is you want, the greatest manifestation principle in the world, right? Manifest your desires. Number one, think about the desires you have at present. Are they motivated by love or by selfish interest, ambitions, revenge, personal gain, or other things? If they are motivated by anything other than love, refine your desire in a way that it becomes an expression of love. Perhaps one that is of a benefit not just to you, but to others or mankind. So let's say you just want a fancy house on a hill, right? Is that just because you want to show off, right? Or is it because you need it because you have an orphanage or because your family needs space or because whatever reason, right? If you can motivate it by love, if not, then get rid of it from your desires, right? Number two. Now think about how you go about the pursuit of your desires. Do you nourish every aspect of your pursuit with love? Or do you operate from a spirit of hostile competition, one-upmanship, wrongful pride, exploitation of the weak, shrewdness, control freakishness, or other things? If you're surrounding the pursuit of your desire with anything other than love, change your actions and attitudes to embrace a benevolence and kindness towards everyone you encounter. Think of what you can do to make other people's lives more joyful instead of focusing on their usefulness to you. Think of ways of expanding the scope of your pursuit to benefit more people and be of service to mankind. When you encounter conflict or problems that go with your need to control every situation, your need to win every argument, or your need to appear superior. In every transaction, whether business or personal, ask yourself the question, how can I bring love into this interaction? That's number two. Step number three, stay connected to the energy field, which is responsible for all of creation, including manifestation. 
by being in a state of love as often as possible throughout the day. Okay, the best way, sorry, my thing fell down. The best way to do this is by practicing the love pathway exercise described in chapter five. I'm not going to go back. Whenever you're experiencing the low energy states of fear, stress, doubt, worry, sadness, anger, frustration, apathy, grief, guilt, or shame, do the flip switch maneuver by saying the following abbreviated version of love's pathway to yourself. I am the full expression of God's love, just as God is, so am I, and I am love. You may also say it to yourself anytime during the day. When the high frequency vibration of love occupies the same field as lower energies, the lower energies are nullified and converted to higher energies. Okay, so it's important to emphasize that connecting to energy fields does not presuppose that you are not a part of the energy field. You are in the field and it is in you. The only thing that keeps you separate from it, from being one with it, is your identification with your ego. So I'm going to stop there, but it goes on and on. <laughs> so thank you for being on the live. I so appreciate you all. I do these every Wednesday. They're not always this long. Today was really long, but usually it's a lot not this long. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure next week is a lot shorter. Hi Alter, hi Greek Connect. Welcome guys. So thank you for being on. My blog is yesfinanciallyfree.com. Be sure to put your name, email on the right column to get on my email list. And then I send out the topics I do every Wednesday in advance so you know what I'll be talking about. And you can email me. So if you have any questions or information you want to share, you can email me and we can talk to each other. So get on my email list. So I'm a really cool person. I always do these great live broadcasts about wealth, money, um, abundance. You can click on the link in my um, profile if you're on Periscope and put in your name and email there to get on my email list. Thank you for staying awesome. I appreciate you. Thanks for being on. I hope you got a lot of value from this. Uh, like I said, it's also on my blog. And I also put the page numbers in books, and I'll put more detail later, not today. But have a great Wednesday, yeah? And I'll see you next Wednesday, if not sooner. Aloha. Bye-bye. And for my YouTube live, I just want to say thank you so much for being on. And the blog below has more detail. If you watch this whole thing and you're still on, thank you for being here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Creative Abundance Now. If you're on my blog, definitely subscribe to the mail list. It's really great, and uh, you also get a free gift. So, thanks for watching. Aloha.